Howdy, this is Pill Ryder, and welcome to the first video in my new series. Um, I'm, if I sound a little funny or a little preachy, it's because I have scripted everything so I don't ramble as much and get off topic like I do in my live stream videos. But anyway, uh, I hope you like it, or at least I hope it makes you think a little bit. So here we go. Enjoy. First of all, I'd like to say that if I tend to come down a lot harder on the left than the right, it's not that I agree more with the right than the left. It's that nowadays the left are a lot more vocal and a lot more radicalized. In reality, I don't disagree with most of what they stand for. What I do disagree with is the methods taken by extremists of any group. Personally, my views on most issues are a little bit more towards the liberal side. And because of this, I'm embarrassed to be a part of the same group as these crazy extremists and these, these social justice warriors and the PC police types. I think that the majority of liberals, which I consider myself a part of that category, are trying to distance ourselves from that extreme left to the point where Trump was elected. This has got to tell you something. We are so afraid of the far left that we let Trump get elected. We contributed to Trump being elected. Maybe I'm wrong, but with me, I've always been a nonconformist, and I think that the majority of liberals kind of pride themselves in being nonconformists, you know, rebels, uh, getting away from the norm. But the extreme left has brought on this PC culture and are trying to get people to conform, conform to it. This is a conservative stance, conformity. The dictionary defines conformity as behavior in accordance with socially accepted conventions and standards. But who gets to decide which groups accepted standards? This is dictating how people should act and think. The thought police how one group's ideas and beliefs are better than everyone else's. Now, I strongly believe in equal rights and treating others with decency and respect, no matter what they look like or what opinions they have, unless they show me that they don't deserve my respect. But even then, I still try to treat them with decency as much as I can. But what I see all over YouTube is people trying to divide each other into us and them. The ones who are preaching the loudest about equality, sexism, and racism are the same ones who are driving the wedge deeper and deeper between these different groups. There are a lot of words being thrown around with the sole intent of inciting hatred and violence against anyone who doesn't think and believe exactly the same way as the people protesting. The middle ground is getting smaller and smaller to the point where many people are being forced to pick a side even if they believe that neither side is completely right. You may agree with some points that the extreme left are advocating, but also disagree with other points. Or you may agree that there are some problems with sexism, but not to the extreme extent that hardline feminists make them out to be. But because you're somewhere to the right of the extreme left, you're then labeled alt-right or even freaking Nazi. I've seen it happen over and over again where some YouTuber with some pretty liberal views has been labeled alt-right just because they laughed at some crazy extremist view or BS given by someone from the far left. Just because someone is skeptical of your views doesn't mean that they totally disagree with them. And because one group of people sees an issue as a dire situation or maybe even a matter of life and death doesn't mean that everyone who agrees with them sees that same issue in that same way. Everyone has their own serious situations, which maybe for them hit a lot closer to home, like the health and welfare of their immediate family. By labeling everyone that is more conservative than you as alt-right or Nazi, all you're doing is watering down these words, giving them less meaning. Conservatism is not synonymous with Nazism, no matter how much you say it. And the entire next generation of people will think it's okay to be a Nazi, because according to the extreme left, 
everyone else is. There also seems to be a lot of groups playing the blame game. It seems to be trendy to be a victim, blaming the hand that life dealt you on anything and everything else instead of embracing who you are with a positive attitude and accepting responsibility for your own future. A child can blame their parents for being bad parents, but when they get old enough, they have a choice to either dwell on it or move on and become something stronger and wiser for the experience. You can blame the government and society for all your problems, but at least in Western culture, these things are always evolving and are designed to change as social values change and should be respected and praised because the alternatives are unthinkable and horrific, like communism, fascism, anarchy, and tyranny. Our governmental system is designed to give everyone who wants it a voice and the right to peaceful protest and not let any one group have the ability or the right to stop any other group from speaking their mind. If any person or group is allowed to stop any other person or group from speaking, what's to say that next time it won't be you? This is how selective propaganda happens, where the only information you receive is what one person or group wants you to hear. This is what happened in Nazi Germany, communist Russia, and now in North Korea, as well as many other places in time and history that you would never want to live in. After giving this some good thought, I could only come up with two reasons why people would be afraid to let others speak. They are afraid that others will somehow make more sense than them, or they think that the audience is too stupid and or naive and will easily be swayed by some antichrist or Hitler type smooth talking asshole. They need to give people more credit than that. If everyone would fight against censorship and support the right of free speech for all in this information age where knowledge is just right at the tips of our fingers, the assholes, the real Nazis, the would-be dictators would dig their own graves. I can't emphasize this more. The majority of people can see through bullshit. Even mine, even yours. What some people have a hard time seeing or understanding or even admitting is that everyone goes through a lot of shit at different points in their lives. Life in general is made up of obstacles to overcome. How you react to these obstacles makes the difference between feeling like a victim or being a student of life. You could either bitch and complain about everything that the universe throws at you, or you could treat it as an adventure and soak it all in and learn from it. Treat life like it's this crazy equation to be solved, not this deep, dark abyss of nasty and evil people trying to suck you in and keep you down. The majority of people, regardless of sex, culture, religion, or race, are somewhere in the middle of most issues in the political and social spectrum. The extremists in all groups are the loud few. They only look like they're large in numbers by their extreme actions and their willingness to prey on the more vulnerable, needy, and or confused people in our society, like teens and young adults who are still trying to find their place in the world, most times without the best parental and or adult role models. It's my strong belief that we, in Western society, regardless of class, race, creed, religion, or sexual orientation are lucky enough to be alive in this, the best and most amazing time in history, where we have the ability to learn about others at the speed of light, see how others live and what they believe, interact with the lives of others around the world in real time, and be a part of their joys and sadness, make a difference, and almost immediately see the results. We are so lucky to be a part of this. The hate mongers from the right and the left need to stop bitching about words and meanings, or the most ignorant thing ever, trying to fight perceived verbal violence with actual physical violence. What if we put all that effort into coming together and using our new power, the internet, social media, to understand and help each other, to really help each other? and those who are actually less fortunate than us. If you want to see me do more of these kinds of videos, please help support my channel on PayPal or Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, share, subscribe, or leave a comment.